Hi there, this is Ricochet. Today I'm going to show you how to create a simulation of a helicopter crash in Armour 3 that works in multiplayer. It must be reliable and consistent, obviously. Um, this is a mission that's being made at the moment uh, called a Canna Whip Ass. This is the first episode of that two part mission. Um, the basic story goes that we're transferring across uh, Gostarea, which is an incredible map, by the way. Uh, American troops moving to the US base in the southwest. And um, unfortunately, the helicopter has a major malfunction, comes down in the desert. And um, basically, we then have finding some transport. We've got to make our way across to the base, which is 21 kilometers away. Um, and this whole section over here was in a previous uh, video of mine where it shows you how to build a road um, if there isn't a road. And it basically does some, uh, it does some terraforming. The road actually removes all the objects as you place it down, uh, or when, the, when it's running in game. It actually removes all of the ground, uh, or the terrain objects in the mission. So um, that was quite a tedious process, but at least it now guides people through the simplest route through the mountains. I mean, if you have a look at this, it's, uh, it's pretty rugged terrain, and for a vehicle to try and get through here, it's about a two hour drive, which is uh, obviously quite tedious with the road and uh, and some transport, which I've strategically provided in various areas. Um, you can probably do it in about an hour, an hour of thereabouts. Essentially, the mission's more about the journey than the destination. So, okay, so let's get into it. So firstly, obviously we've got a chopper, which is a UH-60M. It's currently set to flying altitude. Um, Here's the player group. The player is P1. Um, I put an add rating on all of the player units so that uh, if you accidentally shoot one of your teammates, you suddenly don't become an enemy to them. Um, I've also run this. I like to keep the, the player units outside of the chopper because it allows me to, do, to manipulate their loadouts. and It's a little bit easier than working with them when they're actually inside the vehicle. So um, this little bit of code here basically uh, basically moves each unit in the array, which is group player, into the UH-60. Um, this mission will be on Steam Workshop probably within a week. You can download it, um, install DPBO or some PBO manager, and then you can, uh, if you want to have a look at the, uh, all the scripts and so on, there's a significant number of scripts in this mission. Please subscribe on the Steam Workshop. Okay, so the first thing that needs to happen is I normally give the chopper a little bit of velocity to kick it off so that you don't end up with a static chopper hovering in air and then it suddenly uh, lowers its nose to, to gain uh, normal flight speed. So in this particular case, um, I give it 18 meters per second, which is about 65 kilometers an hour. It's a nice, relatively slow speed, but it's, it's appropriate. Anyway, so the chopper flies in, it hits this trigger. Uh, this trigger basically sets the fuel to 0 0.1, in other words, to 10%. Uh, it then sets the damage to 55%. It, it enables a cam shake, and then it adds a cam shake very short duration cam shake. At this point, you hear Bitching Betty say there's a major failure. It then passes the, the, the vehicle name to a script called Smoke Heli. It then also increases the velocity slightly and gives it a downward velocity so that it sort of starts forcing it down towards the ground. Tricky part is simulating something where, where you've got physics of the flying vehicle and you've also got the FSM or finite state machine of the uh, pilot controlling his actions now. They're sort of fairly unpredictable. So the only way I can guarantee that the chopper is going to hit in a specific point within a radius of maybe 50 meters on the map is to give it some downward velocity. Okay, so it flies into the next trigger it then all the fuel is removed and the reason i do that is so that the pilot essentially has no control at that point so now it's just physics the vehicle will obviously fall out of the sky 
a simulator hit on the main rotor. Let's check for large propeller. It then plays a warning from the pilot so that he's, uh, he's getting a significant movement in the pedals and so on. It then increases the damage on the chopper. It then switches damage off on the chopper because we don't want it to explode on the ground because obviously uh, it's not going to kind of be realistic. I mean, we want the players to be alive after the, the crash. Um, it then switches off damage for the player group, P1 being, being the player. It then increases the velocity to 25 um, meters per second and then it gives it an additional downward push. At that point, this trigger will kick in when the chopper is on its way down to the ground. It checks the vertical height. I'm, I'm using this to trigger a script where you pass out. Basically what happens is, and the reason this is set to two, not, not zero, is because based on the velocity or the downward velocity, uh, it takes about two seconds for, uh, for this to happen or about one and a half seconds. So if I set this to zero, this is gonna to happen too late. So we run a, a script called Pass Out, overlays a sound, an impact sound of the chopper hitting the ground, and that will overlay with the actual sound of the chopper hitting the ground, so you get a, a, a more realistic sound of a, of a crash. Uh, it kills the, kills the driver, UH-60D is the driver, uh, or pilot. Um, it hits the glass, of the chopper, not that you probably will notice at this point because you're kind of more concerned about getting killed. Okay, so the pass out script first blurs the screen, commits it in uh, in about a second. So the screen blurs as you get hit, as you hit the ground, it blacks out, or you black out. It then runs. Um, it smokes the wreck, UH-60 wreck. It sleeps for 19 seconds. It ejects all of the individual uh, units in the player's group from the UH-60. It then randomly positions the players in while the screen is black within a 25 meter radius of the UH-60 wreck. It then um, puts everyone into an unconscious state within the group, the player group. It then makes sure that the particle sources around the, uh, the original UH-60 wreck are removed within a radius of 10 and then deletes the UH-60. The reason it removes the particle effect is that if, the, if you're waking up and at the wreck and you see another plume of smoke or some particle effect just over the hill, it's kind of going to, going to look a bit weird. So uh, it ensures that there are no particle uh, re remnants uh, on the original UH-60. Remember, there was uh, smoke attached to the UH-60. When we delete the, the vehicle, all of the particles that were attached to that wreck will be deleted as well. However, there'll be residual particles. So it ensures that there's no smoke in the air. It then unhides uh, the UH-60 wreck the pilot, the crew, and both the crew members. It then um, unhides the uh, craters, the eight craters where the wreck is. Um, it then uh, disables the collision of the pilot with the wreck and the wreck with the pilot. It then switches the pilot into a um, dead carrying animation. It then um, hide unhides the wreck pilot and attaches the pilot to the wreck uh, through the windscreen. It then points him out of the chopper so that he's not facing inwards because that'll look weird. Um, it then disables his movement, which is kind of unnecessary because he's already in a switch move state, so he can't really theoretically move. It then uh, gives him some damage so that when you see the pilot hanging through the window, he's obviously covered in blood. It would be a bit weird if he wasn't. It then fades out from black over 10 seconds, allows the fade in to happen. It then switches on damage and for each of the player units and gives them a damage 
of from 0.6 to 0.9, so from 60% to 90%, each player unit will be damaged, so we'll be covered in blood. Um, it then switches us out of the unconscious state and then um, passes the unit, the group leader or team leader uh, to a, a script called AI Heal. It creates an array of units that belong to the team leader and for each of the units, it performs this action. It checks to see the damage state of that individual unit, as long as it's not a player. It then allows the unit to switch into a, a standard medic animation. Uh, it takes five seconds approximately for that animation to complete. It then creates zero damage for each of the units so that they, the units, uh, the uniforms are all uh, removed the bloods removed from the units and the units are able to walk properly stands them up waits for half a second and repeats that for each unit now the ai units will do that when it when they are ready to do it so you'll, they won't all do it at exactly the same time having done all of that it then rejoins the unit uh each of the units to the uh player sets the unit, unit behavior or the group behavior to safe, sets the group behavior to normal, sleeps for 120 seconds, or waits for 120 seconds, and then it removes all the particles uh, within a radius of 10 meters around the wreck. Chopper comes in, all of this area here is hidden. These, this is actually the wreck that we're gonna wake up next year. Um, this chopper, is basically our chopper that we're going to kind of, I don't think the average person is going to realize that this is not the real chopper that we crashed in. This is the poor pilot that's going to end up lying through the window with a big hole in the window. This chap, um, co-pilot's dead, this guy's also dead. Um, it's going to be a significant amount of fire, lots of oil that's spilt out on the, on the sand. Dug a bit of a crater because we touched down over here and slid into this area. So the pooling of oil is at the base of the chopper. Uh, two fire modules that get triggered. And they get triggered when uh, the UH-60 that we're in is actually destroyed. And that also then fires up a, uh, a large smoke object and attaches the smoke to the wreck. Um, the, so that's the wreck, okay? And this whole area is hidden. So now we're going to actually run it. In case you're confused, we changed the name from a can of whippers, which is a separate, three separate missions, to Behind Enemy Lines, which is a prequel to a can of whippers, just in case you wondered.
Truck, 300 meters. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please uh, subscribe, leave comments and all that good stuff. Thanks very much. Cheers.